there are actually two school strikes coming up. There's the climate strike and one for Palestine. That's playing straight into the hands of Hamas. A school strike organised by Free Palestine Melbourne. Join me as Rowan Dean, editor of The Spectator Australian, host of Outsiders on Sky News every Sunday at 9am. I never miss it. Uh, Rowan, the pro-Palestine lobby recruiting school children to go march for Palestine sounds really sus to me, very inflammatory. Well, it's completely outrageous, Andrew. And uh, certainly if I had a child at school uh, who was... Uh, likely to be going on this. Uh, I can't speak for other parents, but I would certainly be making sure my child did not attend school on that particular day, because I think this is just disgraceful. Um, there's an argument for kids being exposed to, you know, political, uh, uh, the ins and outs of politics and the big issues of the day and so on and so forth. But uh, in this instance, uh, we are seeing, uh, we had 1,500 horrific murders, abductions, rapes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I won't go through all the gory details, uh, and that should be the focus. Now, if these children are being taken by the teachers and demanding a ceasefire, as Penny Wong apparently did request and then didn't request, or whatever the latest nonsense going on in the Albanese government is, as they tear themselves apart trying to figure out how to uh, uh, not look like the craven cowards that they obviously are, um, what? Uh, what you would say, Andrew, is you would tell the kids, listen, we think, uh, you know, all wars are bad and, and in order to uh, make sure there's no further suffering, uh, it would be good to have a ceasefire. And the conditions for a ceasefire are that, uh, which can be organised tomorrow, is that uh, the murderers, the murdering bastards who um, uh, ruin so many lives, uh, uh, give themselves up and hand back every single hostage. That's the moral thing Easy. that we should be teaching our children. That if someone does something really bad, they must be punished and they must make amends. So until Hamas surrenders, uh, all its, all the, everybody involved in that murderous ra rampage, until it gives back every single yeah. hostage is accounted for, yeah, and until and Hamas, Hamas makes surrender. clear okay. how it will pay reparations to every murdered family, then that's the preconditions for a ceasefire. Sorry, Andrew. They don't even need to do that. They just need to surrender themselves to uh, captivity and Israel will accept that. I mean, the idea, the ceasefire now is so dishonest, uh, Rowan, because what, what are they saying? That after two or three days, OK, the war can continue. That, that, what they'll be marching in the streets then for? Another ceasefire, another ceasefire. It is a bull, I was going to say a bad word, it's a, it's a, it's a dishonest catch cry. Surrender to Hamas should be the uh, cry. But here's the thing. Here, have these exactly. Palestinian supporters asked themselves... Why so many of their protests are aggressive and even violent? Why Victorian police have had to rush 60 more officers to patrol Melbourne's Jewish, Jewish areas, for instance. Why the Office of Victorian Labor MP Kat Theophanis was defaced by pro-Palestinian activists because she supports Israel. You don't hear this level of harassment from pro-Israel supporters. No, of course not. And uh, the, this is where moral equivalency is so dangerous. And this is why teaching our children moral equivalency, we can see how it's polluted the minds of the left, of the trade unions, clearly of many teachers. Mm -hmm. uh, this sort of moral equivalency is poisonous. Uh, we must teach our children. For the West, it's important that we teach our children the lessons of two world wars. We never want to see that sort of carnage again. And we learned that the only way to end that sort of carnage is a decisive surrender of those who, who, who uh, wish you harm. I must say, I've just come across the most pathetic example of anti-Semitism, in my opinion, uh, from a, a Sydney company that provides jumping castles for parties. They refused the booking from Jewish uh, parents be, and said they don't want their blood money. I mean, if that's not anti-Semitic, I don't know what is. Um, but let's switch. Uh, Dan Andrews, a Victorian Premier, you know, uh, no friend of uh, our show, and we're no friend of his, so... Uh, the most uh, savagely repressive premier uh, during the pandemic and an authoritarian to boot, is reportedly facing a ban from joining the Port Sea Golf Club. It's swished there. One supposed reason that I read in the media is that he locked down the morning to Peninsula, where the course is during the pandemic. Rowan, a ban on the premier, is it fair enough or petty? 
<laughs> well, well, Andrew, I would have gone the other way. I would have um, allowed Dan Andrews to join my golf club. And then the moment he was out on the tee by himself or with his friends about to tee off, a group of police officers would have rushed on, tackled him to the ground, forced him to wear a mask, dragged him off, tasered him, shot rubber bullets at him, uh, you know, and given him the treatment that he gave so many people during COVID. Uh, I would have gone that way myself personally. But, uh, and then I would have had a flight of stairs down from a beach cottage down to the lawn and seen whether he could walk in a straight line without falling off it uh, before I gave him his membership dues to the club. Sorry, I'm just being sarcastic, obviously. <laughs> well, I think in a sense you can understand it because you remember during the pandemic, um, I hate petty revenge policies, I've got to put it there. But I, I will say this, during the pandemic, don't forget that the Premier actually banned people from playing golf in the open air, which was about the safest place they could possibly be, yes. wide open fairways, fresh air, rather than cooped up, breathing in other people's uh, you know, oxygen, uh, carbon dioxide emissions. I mean, seriously, um, you'd be a bit <laughs> cranky as a golfer yourself if you had done that to your club, wouldn't he? Wouldn't you? Well, I think uh, we could go the other way. We could put Dan down in the basement. They could have one of those little things that you used to see in businessmen's offices and Dan could have the 20th hole or the 19th hole or whatever it is and, and practice that all day long because it's too dangerous to go outdoors. You might pick up a virus. You never know. Some bit of wind, some grandma might, might walk past you and, and oh, you might kill her if you're out there. <laughs> so uh, I, think, I think the golf club could have a bit of fun. Uh, just quickly... Only a few seconds left, uh, half a minute left. Sky News documentary Liberals in Power by Chris Kenny will be straight on after this show. Uh, it had great ratings yesterday. Um, it's really, for me, all that backstabbery. I know the Liberals are now out of power, but I have the feeling I'm getting more confident about the ability of Peter Dutton to actually make the Liberals stand for something now. 100%. Andrew, I'm going to repeat it here. I'm going to repeat it for the next 18 months. Peter Dutton will be the next Prime Minister. Thank goodness, because we cannot carry on with this madness, this moral equivalency of the left. Uh, we need a Peter Dutton government. He's, since The Voice, he's found a way to do it. He will win the next election. No problems at all. <laughs> Mate, I'd laugh at you. There you go. You've been you can right record a couple it of other big calls. Back. Paul Barry can record yeah, it. I will. It you've, you've said it often enough. It'll be there. <laughs> Rowan Deep, thank you so much for your time. <laughs>